Welcome back you legends, I'm Dr. Khan. Let's get right into this video because this was an insane day. So let's take a look. The S&P 500 is up 2.37%, the Nasdaq 2.31%, and the Dow leading with 2.47%. Let's take a look at the different sectors, everybody. Basic materials leading, followed by cyclicals, industrials, and tech lagging or communication services, again, because of that terrible earnings report from Snapchat, as well as real estate. So this was a full-on risk-on move today, except for the communication services stocks, including Google and Meta, as well as Twitter, because of that horrendous report from Snapchat. But what happened today? What did actually happen today? The stock market futures, the pre-market trading was deep blood red right up until 8.51 a.m. Well, what happened on 8.51 a.m.? Well, this happened, everybody. By the way, this is the training community, everyone. Check out the link in the description if you're interested. This is what happened, everybody. Market recovers all pre-market losses after the Wall Street Journal reports Fed may pivot soon. BS meter at a thousand percent. How many times did we hear the same pivot narrative? This is 100% market manipulation and it's legal. The Wall Street Journal just saved their extremely wealthy friends and their massive underwater positions. Now, as soon as I saw this, I knew exactly what was happening. The futures were deep, deep red. In fact, if you opened any article talking about the stock market just before the market opened, you would have seen everything talking about yields skyrocketing, the market collapsing, and then just out of nowhere, this article showed up. Now, make no mistake, this was 100% intentional. The Wall Street Journal could have easily published this article after the market closed. They did it exactly before the market opened, 30 minutes before the market opened to allow the futures to react very quickly and save the market. This was the news, Wall Street rallies on hopes of less aggressive Fed by Reuters. This was the original Wall Street Journal article, Fed set to raise rates by 75 basis points and debate the size of future rate hikes. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, a Fed pivot. Now, you cannot make this up. Look at the article that they published right after that. Two-year Treasury yields fall amid hopes Fed will slow interest rate increases in December. So, it's, so literally, they're manufacturing news and then they're reporting on the reaction by the market. So they know exactly what they're doing. And the two-year yield did, in fact, break down out of this ascending wedge. Now, this ascending wedge is a bearish structure, and I was waiting for a breakdown out of this wedge. We saw the same thing with the 10-year yield. The 10-year yield was skyrocketing up, and then it reversed completely to the downside, forming this inverted hammer candle, this tombstone candle, and it will very likely now continue to break down out of this ascending wedge structure. Now, here's the thing. What makes this Wall Street Journal article so, so potent as a market manipulation tool is the fact that we have no Fed speakers coming up next week and no Fed speakers at all until the November 2nd Fed meeting. And so the Fed has no chance at all to debunk this, to refute it. They've entered their quiet period running into that Fed meeting on November 2nd. And so the Wall Street Journal published that article in the perfect time, not only to save the market, but to perpetuate this rumor to allow the market to rally ahead of the FOMC meeting on November 2nd. Unfortunately, this is extremely bad news, everybody, because every single time we've seen the market go into a Fed meeting with optimism, we've seen the market crash. This happened right back here, heading into Jackson Hole, when we had that soul, soul crushing crash the market wiping out weeks of gains in a single day. And so as soon as we saw that news break, we closed all of our short positions. In fact, I closed my triple Q's hedge position that I opened yesterday against this extremely risky period of seasonality that we're heading into. The last week of October tends to be the most dangerous time of year where we see massive, massive crashes in midterm years and so yesterday i did open a tiny hedge position with an upside potential of one 
thousand percent if the market sells off following seasonality into next week and into early November. Now, as soon as I saw that article, I completely closed out my position at the open and I ended up booking a very small profit. Now, I spent a lot of time game theorizing this and it throws a big wrench into things. This is what I posted today, a couple of hours before the market closed. Number one, Fed speakers are done. We don't have any more Fed speakers coming out until the interest rate decision on the November 2nd meeting. Next week, we enter the quiet period, which means no Fed official can come out and refute this WSJ article or walk it back, which makes the Wall Street Journal piece all that more of a potent weapon of manipulation. Number two, between now and November 2nd, we're going to have the biggest market moving earnings reports. We're talking about Microsoft and Alphabet on Tuesday, Meta on Wednesday, Amazon and Apple on Thursday. So massive, massive market moving reports coming out next week. The market may shrug off weaker than expected earnings if it thinks the Fed is going to pivot as per the Wall Street Journal article. Number three, this makes November 2nd that much more important, especially if we don't see any significant selling in the stock market ahead of that meeting. Again, if we see the market going into that meeting with optimism, that's a massive, massive, massive red flag. There are more red flags to talk about. I'll mention them just in a second. Now, this means we could have a repeat of the Jackson Hole August 26 soul crushing crash in early November if Jay Powell comes out again hawkish refuting the Wall Street Journal article, putting a stop to the pivot thesis yet again. Number four, the medium term technicals are all bullish. I talked about this in all of my recent videos, including the last video. And this article may have been the necessary fundamental push to suck more money managers back in, but it can significantly distort seasonality. In either case, the most logical course of action would be to wait for the November 2nd Fed meeting and only trade the market tactically between now and then and that's going to be our plan in the trading community if you are interested guys it's 20 bucks a month if you go for the annual membership and it's the best way to support me and my work if that's something you want to do and the best way to track all of my analysis in real time posts like this live charts pre-market intra-market and post-market analysis as well as every single trade and investment that i make in real time I share all of that and much, much, much more in the trading community. Check out the link in the description if you are interested. I've capped the membership count to 1,000 and we're only a few slots away from reaching that goal at that point, everyone. New members will have to sign up for the waiting list. I capped the number of members because I want to keep the same level of quality. I want to be able to answer everybody's questions, attend to all of my members' needs as best as I can because this is my money time machine family. Now, let's take a look at the daily chart, everyone. And we had this massive, massive green candle today. This dotted line, everyone, is the upper weekly expected move for the week. And we blew past that. We were actually headed to fill this gap down here at $357 just before that article came out. And now we had a complete reversal to the upside on a news event. So this is a very significant development and we are very likely to see continuation to the upside going into next week, let's say Monday, Tuesday, before the big earnings come out, at which point I can expect more volatility to come in. The upper weekly expected move, everyone, for next week based on the options market is at $385 and a half. The lower weekly expected move is at 363.3. And so we have a very, very wide range of possibilities next week. And if we again rally really early into the week and slam into the upper weekly expected move, that will likely be one more warning sign to get out of the market heading into those big, big earnings reports. We've never seen anything good come out of an optimistic market running into major events like earnings and like Fed meetings. 
we have this resistance line that tracks the tops of prior rallies and sell-offs and it connects almost perfectly with the upper weekly expected move for next Monday. Now let's take a look at the HYG, the smart money, and the smart money continues to warn that this rally will likely be very short-lived. The smart money made a lower high on an intraday basis today, while the S&P 500 made a slightly higher high today. And the S&P will likely continue to make higher highs and even take out this prior high at $375. While the HYG will very likely, the smart money will very likely fail to take out this high, forming a negative divergence, a bearish divergence that will no doubtly end up breaking to the downside. Now let's take a look at the VIX. Despite the massive rally we've seen today, the VIX is still very high. I'm targeting a retracement back to at least 28 and a half. The next target would be the 50 day moving average at 27, at which point if we see the VIX fall back all the way to these levels, 28 and a half or 27, and we see the S&P 500 rally to 380 or higher than that, and the HYG fails to take out this prior high, those three conditions will very likely mark the perfect entry for the next short position. Let's take a look at the dollar index. We had a massive, massive rally pre-market. We broke out of this bull pennant and the market looked like it wanted to crash. The dollar looked like it wanted to rally to fill this white space, but we broke down. We're now sitting at this support line. If the market continues to rally, which I suspect that it will now after this major, major news event, the dollar will likely continue to sell off at which point if we go back to this 50 day moving average and the lower edge of this ascending channel, again, as the VIX retraces back and as the HYG fails to take out this high, all of those signals will be warning signs to get out of the market. Let's take a look at the 10 year yield. Again, we rallied above this ascending wedge. We've now retreated. We have this tombstone candle. And the yields are now likely to cool down after this news. Same thing with the two-year yield. It has broken down decisively below this descending, excuse me, ascending wedge. And it will likely try to retrace all the way back down to the 20-day moving average as the stock market continues to rally. Let's take a look at the CPC buy and sell signal. This signal continues to be an active buy signal. This is my own variation of the CPC put to call ratio buy and sell signal. And this variation that I developed has been so far year to date 100% accurate. In fact, if you only followed this indicator and nothing else and used very conservative at the money call and put vertical spreads, in each of these signals, riding the wave down and up as each signal is flashed, you would have made over 400% in profits year to date. I made a member exclusive video for the trading community on exactly how to set this signal up because this indicator is very tricky to set up on TradingView. Let's take a look at another indicator that I talked about yesterday and it's this. This is the gold standard breadth indicator for the S&P 500. It's the percent of stocks above the 200 day moving average. And we continue to see this monstrous, monstrous bullish divergence as the S&P continued to make lower lows, breadth continued to make higher lows. You'd have to go six years back to see the last time this sort of divergence developed and it was back in 2016. And the market, everybody rallied by 15% the next two months. Again, let's go back to seasonality. We are now entering the most dangerous time of year, the last week of October, when we tend to see these flush down sell-offs in midterm years. But again, the Wall Street Journal article and the reignition of the Fed pivot narrative will significantly distort seasonality, in my humble opinion. And so at this point, I'd have to put less weight on this seasonality chart. In terms of economic events, everyone, Monday will have the Chicago Fed National Activity Index as well as the S&P 500 PMI flash. Tuesday will have consumer confidence. Wednesday will have new home sales as well as building permits. Thursday will have the GDP growth revision. And Friday will have the personal income and personal spending as well as the dreaded, dreaded PCE inflation figure, which is the preferred inflation figure by the Fed 
and only a couple of days later on November 2nd, we'll have the Fed meeting. And so we have massive, massive, massive events coming up next week, including Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Meta, Alphabet, UPS, and Shopify earnings next week. We will have AMD the week after, and we have the PC inflation figure on Friday. So next week is going to be absolutely insane. Be careful out there, everyone. Manage your risk, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, wow.